What's up guys, Joe Cooper, jcooperfitness.com and today welcome back to the episode 3 of the weight management um, series. So today we're talking about food. There's nothing more important when you're trying to lose weight is your food, is what you're eating. Your nutrition plan is probably, again, people, some people say sort of uh, 85, 80% of your should be food, 20% training, but again, in some cases, it'd be up to 90% of your time and effort should go into new, new nutrition rather than your training. And especially again, nowadays, companies are battling for your money to make sure food is healthy, it's got extra protein, extra fiber, um, supplement companies are out there in their droves trying to again sell the latest products which are going to make you skinny. Um, but ideally what we need to learn first and what you need to understand, especially if you want long term weight loss, is what is real food. And that's what we're talking about today. So stay tuned and let's do this. Okay, so when we talk about food, there's two things I think keep things very simple. So I like to keep things simple because otherwise what's the point? And that is, where's your food coming from? So we talk about real food versus processed food. I would say think of a farm or a factory. If food's coming from a farm, it's probably good for you. If it's coming from a factory, probably not so good. So what do you mean by those? So a farm, for example. So the food that comes from a farm is food that is either naturally grown, reared, fished. It's in its whole form, and it is coming from the best source possible, i.e. like free-range eggs, so trying to be caged eggs, things like that. And again, free range uh, cattle and um, chickens and things like that. And again, organic if you can, but again, be aware of organic because you need to check the source of it. Because some people just put that, again, it's another company thing they can use, to pop on a label, try and make you buy it, think it's better for you. So again, always check those sources. Versus that, we have factory. Factory basically means, as I said, it comes from a factory. So you think it's very hard nowadays um, basically have anything that isn't processed. Even if you think about, say, a packet of fresh chicken breasts in the supermarket in a packet, again, they still might have gone through a process of some sort, whether they've been washed or have chlorine in it or something like that. So again, it's always worth checking out as well. But generally, when we talk about the fat food side of this, we mean processed. The food that has undergone a process, it has been changed, it has been tampered with from its natural form to make it either more edible, add more flavors and taste, or try and add nutritional values to it. So as I say, it's better to have the farm side than the factory side. So always remember that if you ever get stuck, where should food come from? Is it a factory or a farm? Okay, so examples of food that might come from a farm or the food that's better for you is things like fresh fruit and vegetables, meat, like roast chickens, beef, cuts of good cuts of beef and pork. Um, fish, again, ideally fish that's been uh, fished sustainably. Um, nuts and seeds, again, unsalted with the nuts. Cause again, it's easy just going by a packet dry roasted, but try and just get um, unsalted nuts. And if you want to salt them, salt them yourself, because then that way you know how much goes into them. Beans that are not in a sauce, so that means no baked beans, but beans that are generally in can in water, ideal. And of course, eggs and milk. Now, they're not the same. Some people get confused and say eggs, milk, and dairy. It's just because, again, they're usually the biggest farm food things. It's quite big in life. I think cheese, things like that, those are all the processed things. If you're going to stick with dairy at all, whole milk is your best bet. Because again, semi skimmed and skimmed have been processed because they've had the fat removed. Milk, as well, along with, along with water, is the only things that you can technically drink from, a, say, a better farm point of view. Because other than whole milk and water, everything else is processed. Every other fizzy drink or diluted juice or fresh juice or smoothies or anything like that, alcohol of course, it all come from, they all go through a process. So that means water and milk are generally the only things you can drink from the farm source. We'll come into that in a minute. Just remember it is these should always be eaten in their wholest form. So as I said, smoothies, things like that, with getting, taking your fruit and making smoothies, a good treat, but however, it's better to eat them in their whole form. They retain more water, which means they fill you up for longer, and again, it's just better for you in general. Moving on to the factory food then. So what is the factory foods? So the factory foods go through a process. Again, as I say, nowadays, we can't get away from processes. It's all around us. The idea is we need to try and minimize it as best we can. 
factory food can be, the list is almost endless, but generally we're talking about confectioneries. So that's things like chocolate, cake, um, biscuits, crisps, basically anything that comes in a packet. Okay, ready-made meals such as um, ready-made lasagnas or anything of that sort of nature. Ready-made sauces, so jarred sauces and things like that, or tin soups. A lot of these things, again, can be made naturally, they just take a bit of time. But again, companies see you coming, they make them cheap, cheerful and pop them on the shelf and they're kind of convenient. Of course, you can't forget fast food. So whenever you eat out, again, that is a process because two things, one, you don't know how the food's made and two, you don't know what actually is getting put really in front of you. You just, you've ordered the food, it's coming to the kitchen, pre-made in front of you and you're happy or same as with a takeaway, comes in a packet, you open it up and eat it. They're great for a treat every so often. However, you, again, as I say, the big thing is you don't know where they've come from. You don't know how they've been made. So you can never judge how well your body will react. Moving on as well, again, things like pastries, cereals, if you're looking more on the breakfast side, anything, breakfast cereal bars or anything like that, again, have been designed to just give you convenience in your life. But generally, cereal bars, things like that will be made and packed full of sugar, salt, things like that. Of course, finally, alcohol. Everyone likes alcohol. I do, everyone enjoys a drink, everyone enjoys a cocktail, things like that. However, alcohol, again, is, um, massively massively processed uh things that are done to make whiskey to make beer again we're talking about getting grains you have to distill them several times until you get the desired outcome of the liquid and they're stored in barrels for years again it's a massive massive process so again it's good to enjoy in small amounts but again if you have too much alcohol such as uh, beer ciders wines things like that then you will be packing in extra calories and things you don't need so now I've just made lists to destroy your lives and tell you don't eat this, don't eat that, don't eat this, don't eat that, which is usually a big no-no when it comes to being a personal trainer because you're trying to get people to eat better things, not just tell them to cut stuff out. So how can we do this? So it's a very, very simple rule that is used in the fitness industry known as the 80-20 rule. This basically means that 80% of your food should be the farm sort of food that we talked about first. So whole foods, whole grains, um, lean meats, eggs, bit of fresh milk, that sort of thing and 20% can then be sort of the more processed side. So again, as we talked about, things that convenience foods, um, supplements, things like that, that again, they're not exactly best for you. However, they will fit into your life. Because again, if we, I like, as I said, I, like, I take supplements. I'm sure a lot of people out there take um, supplements or need convenience foods if you have a busy life, things like that. So again, what we're trying to do minimize that to the 80 20 rule so as i say so far i think 80 20 rule and farm or factory the farm side is 80 factory side is 20. so how can we translate this into actual daily lives so first things if you're if you've ever been to any of the sort of weight loss um, companies or anything like that, say for example swimming world or weight watchers they have their own sort of versions of this um so for example i know swimming world they basically do things called sins. So 15 sins um, a day is what you're allowed. 85%, 85% of that is then food you're allowed. So it actually works out then. So they're saying basically 85% is the good healthy stuff you can eat, which is going to help you lose weight. And you're allowed 15%, so 15 sins a day to then have your way of, you know, your bit of balance, your bits, your treats and things like that, as long as they fit into their 15 sin system. So again, as you see, that's how companies can again use the system to try and help you out and try and uh, make you lose weight. How you can do it yourself, it's quite simple. Uh, firstly, we can use the, the good plate analogy, if, if you remember that from school, things like that, where 80% of the plate is your good food and 20% is to say your not so good food. So for example, again, we'll talk about calories and macros in a, later on and I'll bring this back up. But what we're talking about really is 40% of your plate should be your sort of meat and protein option. Uh, the other 40% of your plate should be your fibrous whole vegetables. So things like broccoli and um, green beans, carrots, whatever you like should be on that side. And then 20% can then be your sort of um, more processed sort of food. So again, things like white rice or um, pasta, things like that be in that 20% so that way every time you have a meal you can then just think that gives you a nice simple way of thinking what you need to do on your plate other than your 20% your 40% protein your 40% greens 
you know, 20% of sort of um, processed or starchy carbs. And where we can do this is with meals. So again, you think you have three meals a day, seven days a week, that's 21 meals. So if you apply the 80-20 rule, that basically means then 16 of those meals should be good and four of the meals can be then bad. Or four and a half, I suppose, if you really work it out that way. But essentially what that means is basically, so you know then 16 meals need to be really rigid of your good farm food. So as we go back to our plate, we can say things like um, greens, protein, sweet potatoes, things that are really good, wholesome, whole foods can be that way, inclined. And then you can have four meals throughout the week, four and a half, five snacks, whatever. They can be sort of a bit different. So that's, you could be, eat. I'm not just saying just full and full of, you know, have a bowl of Harry bow or anything like that. But what we could do is say, have a takeaway or eat out, or, you know, maybe have just a bit of a convenience food if that is necessary again during the week. The only rule of that is do not make it all in one go. So don't try and have all the four meals in one go and save it all up for one day of a bender each week because that won't really work. What you need to try and do is just, again, throughout the week, just tip tap to your little plan as we talked about planning last week. Just in your plan, fit where you're going to have your little, these sort of cheat meals, if you like, um, sort of to help you along. That way, throughout the week, you know you're getting that little bit of um, cheat meal and the rest of the time you're eating healthy. If you, again, if you're not fun or keen of eating healthy. So in summary, guys, basically what I'm saying is throughout this thing, is just basically, eat more of the 80% foods, more of your whole foods, um, less processes, things like that. Eat less of the 20% foods. So again, for processed, supplemented foods, again, try and eat a lot less of them. Try and batch cook and cook from scratch when you're making meal prep and trying to get a meal prep for the future. So if you need convenience food, try and make your own convenience food. So that way you know what's in it, you know it's healthy and you know it's good for you. Drink more water and try and drink less busy drinks and other processed drinks out there. So water and milk, try and stick with them if you can. And finally, condiments are good. Condiments make everything taste better and gives us that little bit of flavor. But again, just try and limit your use of condiments and try and be smart with them. Try and use more fresh herbs and spices rather than trying to, rather than using pre-made spice packets or pre-made sort of jarred sauce and things like that. Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please leave us a thumb, thumbs up and a like below um, and a comment if you want to see more content like this. Other than that, um, I'll see you next time. I know I usually do a little fizz thing at the end of this, however, today what I'm going to tell you to do is go out and go run somewhere. I went for a nice run yesterday, it was really good to sort of brush out the cobwebs. So you go for a run, a walk, do something which involves going outside. I know it's a bit cold out there now because it's winter, but again, try and get out, try and go for a walk and try and get some air, fresh air in your lungs. But until next time guys, cheers for watching, I'll see you soon.